G'day Squigoff. Thanks for the follow, champion. G'day Ape in control. Mini MF, what's happening? <clears throat> yeah, no, look, it's, uh, don't forget it, I'm a day ahead, so it's Boxing Day for me. Um, but indeed, we are, we are here to do a little bit of painting. G'day Topolis. All right, uh, we're probably just going to keep working on this this chick, I think. What have I got on here at the moment? Auto focus, yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but I do have some exciting stuff that got delivered during the week to show off as well, but let's just get started on some painting of the Morrigan. So I think I decided on this colour for her Roby outfit. Everyone have a good Christmas? Everyone having a good Christmas? If you celebrate it. Australia Christmas is very hot so yesterday we were in the pool swimming eating seafood um, yeah she's, she's pretty intimidating to paint I guess at this point in time I'm um, I'm enjoying her but yeah, we'll see if that continues to be the case. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely the opposite of yours, mate. Absolutely about as opposite as you could get. Um... Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of little details uh, all over her that I'm concerned about. Oh, Ape in Control making me sing a song. That's an early song. What can I sing for you, champion? You get to choose, my friend. You get to choose the song. Sing whatever I like. <laughs> dear oh dear. Uh, <clears throat> Tommy used to work on the docks. His union's been on strike. He's down on his luck. It's tough. Ooh, so tough. He says we gotta hold on to what we got. It doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. We got each other, and that's a lot for love. We'll give it a shot. Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa, living on a prayer. Take my hand, and we'll make it, I swear. Whoa. A word, a word, a word. There you go. Not really a Christmas song, is it? Still counts. Thank you, mate. Yes. It's a little something I've been working on.
Ah, oh, Jack Conrad. Indeed. I sort of want to have it be both cold and warm because the palette of the whole piece is very cold but I want her to contrast from the dudes down the bottom Aping Control is making me sing another song. Alright, champion. What can I sing for you this time? And how long have you been secretly watching and biding your time? Just waiting for the right moment to strike. Uh, that's up to the viewer to interpret. Uh, my friend, I haven't really decided. Kickstart my heart. Who sings that? Let me Google it and see if I know it. I don't know that I know that song off the top of my head. By Motley Crue. Nah, I can't sing that one, my friend. I don't know that. War Kid PL. War Kid, if that means you're from Poland. Your name's War Kid. Welcome, champion. And if it doesn't mean that, well, I feel a little foolish. But I'm confident it does, maybe. G'day mate, what's going on? Haha, ah, Wilson. What's going on, mate? Have a good Christmas? Oh, we're sculpting. Oh, perfect. 
Good job, them. Yeah, my mum tried hard this year. The last few years, I said to her, just don't, don't get me any presents while well, I don't need anything. And she always feels bad. She's always like, oh, I want to get you a present. So this year, she tried really hard. She got me a light box to try and take photos in. I said, that's awesome, well, thank you. How much was this? And she's like, $16 from Aldi. I said, cool. The light box I'm currently using has a $250 light in it. So I'm probably just going to stick with that one, actually. Then she brought me, or bought me some clothes, which I always appreciate because I don't often buy clothes for myself. And the final thing that she brought me was a power pack, a battery pack for my mobile telephone. So you can use this for work. I said, that's all right. I've already got three of them. <laughs> Poor thing. She just, she just tries. She just wants to do something for me. It's like, whoa, it's okay. Mind you, I, uh, I'm not much chop either. <clears throat> so I normally, I normally just forget to buy presents. Every now and then if I see something, I'm like, oh, that's perfect for one of my my sister or my parents or my niece or nephew. I'll be like, yep, I'm buying that for them. But most of the time, I just I don't even think about it. So I normally just stop into the old servo. G'day, Al. Just stop into the old servo on the way to Christmas and just be like, hey, what can we get from the servo for a present? Love a cheeky servo gift. So this year, I stopped in at the servo and they got gift cards. Thinking, there we go, that's it. I'll just get gift cards and then I'll look like a champion. So I'm saying to the survey lady, I'll have four gift cards, thanks. Fifty dollars each. Everyone wins. And apparently the servo uh, has a cap on how much they can, how many gift cards they can sell in any given month. They're not allowed to sell more than a certain amount. And guess guess what they run out of that cap about an hour before I arrived at the survey so I couldn't get survey presents either so I just got some chocolate some Cadbury favorites boxes just rocked up with that so there you go friends that's your presents very good <laughs> now we went in the pool Uh, so, uh, Ape in Control, I didn't, I couldn't sing, uh, that Motley Crue song, so what, what other song would you like me to sing, mate? Hey, Fox a little, thank you. And to you. If you are that way inclined. Haha. <laughs> Thanks for the Christmas cheer. Or holiday cheer. What a legend. Thanks, Fox a lot all. <clears throat> My favorite song, wow. Alright, let me think about that for a second. Yeah, he's um he's he's genuinely a very, very good author. Um his writing is magnificent. 
he gets a little bit lost in the later in the later books in terms of like plot. He's not as good at moving the plot along, but but you don't really care because he's just you know he's writing about stuff that he obviously is he loves. So um, yeah, and it's it's usually pretty interesting there, even if it isn't directly talking about the key characters. The finale of the TV show was uh, was yesterday for season one. Have some thoughts which we'll share later on. Uh, Nazumi 1977 this is from Journeyman Miniatures and it is called The Morrigan is the name of the sculpt. Uh, what the fuck is my favourite song? This will sound weird, but I don't know that I really have a favourite song. Hmm. Uh, oh, Edelweiss is close, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Minimancer. Edelweiss is probably a good, good shout. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, every morning you greet me, small and white, clean and bright, you look happy to greet me. Blossom of snow, may you bloom and grow, bloom and grow forever. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, bless my homeland forever. Yeah, so the TV show that came out um, on Amazon, based on the Wheel of Time, finished just yesterday, the day before, sorry, Christmas Eve, and uh, fans of the book series are spitting chips. Oh, oh, we got a hype train, holy shit, Christmas hype train. Oh, my. They're absolutely spitting chips about it. They hated it. They hated it with a fiery passion. Book book fans. People that don't know anything about the book are less spitting chips. I personally thought it was outstanding. Um, to be able to watch a show about characters that I'm intimately familiar with, but also manage to be surprised about what's happening. I thought it was awesome. Uh, look. I'll let you watch the show since you've read the first book. The first season is uh, just follows. It doesn't extend any further than what you've read, so you should watch it. It is it is a very different adaptation, but having just read the first book, I'm sure you can appreciate how difficult that would be to adapt that into a television show. Um, so there has to be, there had to be changes, there had to be a different approach to the story, otherwise, yeah, it just would be 
59 episodes a book. I think there's, I think there's something like 2,500 named characters in the book series across the entirety of the book series. There is a very large number of characters. So, it's just not possible. So I was, I was, um, perplexed, perplexed at the start in the first few episodes, I was like, this is different, this is not what I was expecting. But expectation is, oh thanks DC Minis, expectation is the, uh, the cause of many of life's ills in my opinion. I think that's that's been generally the the response from most non-book readers is it's been yeah this is fine <clears throat> um, what what I will say is that the first season it felt like they rushed they rushed there was there was a lot of things that happened really really quickly and probably not enough time to marinate on characters or moments. I think if you if you reflect on what made Game of Thrones really successful as a show, it wasn't the sex position or anything like that. It was it was just the strength of the characters early on. villains yeah I think I think the second season will really be um, a significant improvement just in terms of pacing um, uh, yeah I'm, I'm really excited for for the show to continue and I hope they get to do the full the full uh, story um, the intent was to condense the 14 books down into eight seasons, um, which would be cool. So yeah, I just hope they get to get to finish the story, because I think the ending will be a significant improvement over. Um, the ending we got for the Game of Thrones. Maybe. Alright, let's have a look at some toys. Let's have a look at some cool toys. I'll wait for this to dry. Uh, all right, yes. Yeah, so I got my uh, I got my ultimate tool. Yeah. I'm fucked if I know how because I didn't get a shipping notification or anything and they just they just rocked up. 
So, um, but yeah, no, no complaints, no complaints from me. So, look, I've, I went all in. We're doing a big, we're doing a big diorama. And when I say we, well, I mean me. No, I was, I was back at number one on, um, on the, the other one. Come along. Fucking hell, your box, your sticky paper's too fucking sticky, you fucks. Alright, we've got a bear. Check out the casting. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. This is nice. Yes. Yes. I don't know what the back number I am on this. A lot of bits. <laughs> a lot of little bits in there. Now the detail looks good. Look at that. That's awesome. Yeah. AKA former. I enjoyed that a lot. Well done. Gets an 11 out of 10 from me. You absolutely can. We may not open all of them, but yeah, that's that's good cast. So yeah, let's uh, let's trundle through this guy. Great figure. I don't know about this this bit actually. The face is a bit. I don't know. And this guy's almost like an orc. So this is called Battle of Hyperborea, and that is exactly what my di diorama will be exhibiting, the Battle for Hyperborea. Uh, this guy is my least favorite out of all of them. Um, it's, a, it's a physical sculpt from Joaquin Palacios, and normally I think he is a legend, but <clears throat> when I compare these two, look at the level of detail on the left compared to the level of detail on the right. This just feels like like a sloppy sculpt. Compared like this, this, this here. You know, that's just massive for for no reason. I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. So. It'll be fun to paint, but yeah, I think it's I think it's one it's probably the weakest sculpt in the whole thing. This one being the second weakest same sculptor. And he's a great sculptor, like he's magnificent. I love I've got many of his figures. Um, I just feel like with these with these like giants, he's 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 left a lot of detail off. Well, especially when I compare them to some of the figures like this. I don't have a Discord, mate. You'll just have to send me a... Uh, pop it in here. <clears throat> you know, look at the, when you put these two side by side, right? Look at how much magnificent detail there is on this Hilda compared to this guy. I just think they're chalk and cheese in terms of, like... What could have been. Anyway, that'll be fun. <coughs> Yeah, I think Kirill did do a paint job. I don't think that one is Kirill's. Yeah, that one's Kartachi. But I think Kirill did do a paint job on that, yeah. So those are the big ones. I think the big ones are the weakest. These are the little ones, and these are my favourites. Look at this. Sergio, Sergio. Francesco. Ricardo. Mm, beautiful. And then two more Sergios. Look at that. Sergio at his absolute peak on these ones. Yeah. Sublime. 
So <clears throat> I've got a I've got a bit of work ahead. So what I'm planning on doing, yeah, Eric Swinson's version's awesome. I hope he's sending that to me. We're doing a secret Santa Christmas thing. I'm sending I'm sending away my um uh what's that fucking model I did? Thanatos. I'm sending away my Thanatos to one of the other dudes in there. So my plan is we're going to do an actual battle scene and that was inspired by this model because she's very action oriented and I love that. Um, so this guy, he feels like he's in, a, he's in an action pose, which is cool. She feels like she's in an action pose. All of the big, all of the big critters feel pretty action oriented. Um, the only ones that we're going to need to do some work on are these two. Maybe this chick. We'll see. Mm. So it was in a surgery. Mm. Yeah. So I want to. I want to change this guy to be like casting a spell. And this chick, I want to change to maybe be throwing the spear. I feel like her body will be positioned okay for that. That's going to be a tricky one. <clears throat> but yeah, I want, to, I want to create a really dynamic battle scene, which would be a little bit different to what I did with Camelot, which wasn't really a dynamic battle scene. Anyway, there you go. That was my... Uh, Thanks, Grumble Bumpkin. Uh, right, let's give some. They just showed up, man. Yeah. This is pretty stoked with that. All right, let's have a look at Squiggot. Alright, so Squigoth, are you familiar with the rules of feedback? Thanks, Corinthia1950 thing. for Christmas. Cool. Piss off. Piss off. Yeah, I hope so. Alright, good. The rules are that you get carved up. Now, I try to, I try to be uh, critical and analytical uh, without uh, being mean, just for the sake of being mean. So, my first piece of feedback um, Uh, is that I'd like to see this more completed before I give a lot of feedback. Because one thing that you do tend to find is that uh, things will look good uh, by themselves, but without um, seeing them in context in, what, in terms of what's around them, um, it's often hard to get a gauge. Like the skin tone to me looks really good at the moment. Um, I really like it. I particularly like the red, the red tinge under the eyes. I really like the, the highlighting on the breasticles. Um, there's probably a few pieces of, of feedback I'd give on that actual skin tone, but I'm hesitant to do that without seeing how it looks with the shoulder pad and the and the shirt done, because it may just be something that doesn't look good because everything looks quite quite light at the moment but when you put some dark beside it it may actually look contextually much better so I'll, I would think um, 
yeah, it'll it'll look pretty good when you've got the rest of the stuff done, the skin tone. So um, the two pieces of feedback I will stick on to is the hair. So I don't think the hair looks very good. Um, it's very shiny. I don't know if, you, if that's because you're using like a game color or a, or a Citadel color or something, but it's got a very shiny look at the moment. Plasticky. Um, and I think uh, it doesn't read as hair. Yeah, so uh, what you need to do with hair, and I'm actually about to do some on this trick, is, is be really uh, considered in where you place your highlights. And you need to take your highlights up really high because um, hair is actually one of the most reflective surfaces you can get. So uh, the hair needs work. Particularly, you want to be thinking about um, so this angle is probably your viewing angle, but you'll also be looking at her from, from this sort of side. Um, and so that hair on, on the left, just above the sword blade, it's all very dull. So you need to highlight there as well. But yeah, the placement of the highlights is important. Uh, and the third, the third piece of feedback is the, uh, the red um, bandana looks really good. The symbol looks really good. I think it would, I think it would work um, better if you just added a little bit more detail. So whether that's doing like a thin line around um, the, the base of the bandana or some, some, some triangle patterns or something, just something because um, I think it's it's good uh, but more detail would be better but yeah mate um, I'll be keen to see how it looks when you're finished because uh, promising start DC minis Ooh, I love this figure it's from Mindworks Alright, first piece of observation, DC Minis. Potato camera, mate. You need to sort out your potato camera. Uh, this is a very overexposed photo. This is a lot more pastel looking than I imagine it looks in real life. So, um, hard to provide super analytical feedback with that being the case, but we will try. This one probably looks a little bit closer to the actual Thing. Like just if you look at the background right, the black sort of looks black or blackish. You look here, it looks grey. So that's how you can tell the photos dog shit. That one's the closest. And you look at the you look at the skin tone there. Yeah. Um I'll start with what I like. I really like the backdrop. I think you've done a neato job on that. Uh, that's really cool. Really, really cool. So well done. Um, I like how you've integrated uh, some physical elements into the backdrop, that, that pole thing. Um, that helps sell backdrop even more, which is great. Um, I potentially... Uh, now I'll come back to that. Yep, so that's good. Um, and I think the palette uh, is good. Like you've got a you've got a really um, you know, neutral and then and then warmish sort of earthy colours for the background and the and the backdrop and his pants and the leathers um, and then you're contrasting that with with a blue cold skin tone and the green hair. So I think I think the palette's really cool. Um, to go on to some some negatives, uh, this this metal thing is reading as grey, not as metal. So that's um, uh, that's something you need to either keep pushing the contrast on or, or darken up the contrast. I think the rust effect that you've done is a little bit uh, too. Uh, it's not enough. Not enough uh, work put into it. Like that's just some orange paint going blop. Rust generally looks better when you have uh, you know micro details of doo -doo 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 -doo, lots of little dots. Um, and a few uh, different values of orange, orange browns and so on. Um, so I think that that is exacerbating the issue of this um, metal piece not looking as good as the rest. 
I like the skin tone. Um, I think that's a really cool color. Um, <clears throat> probably it feels a little bit too cold in context with the rest of what's happening, but you can see there's some yellow, and again, I'd like to see the photo or the model in the hand. Um, one of my uh, biggest uh, uh, things I like to do is make sure that skin in general feels like a single element as opposed to little bits um, and to just use one of my own pieces as an example of that. So this guy's got um, a clearly defined musculature on his stomach um, but it feels like everything is, is connected, it feels like this is one element. I'm sort of finding with yours that it, it looks like you've got three different bits. Um, so there's there's some technical stuff around, you know, bringing those together a little bit more that could have that could have helped. But I think that's a that's a pretty minor observation because it's very close. Um, I think the leather is is uh, not as good as the other elements, um, just in terms of the technical painting. Doesn't doesn't. Uh, read quite like like leather as much. I mean, it looks it looks fine, but you know the rest of it's pretty good. So the leather to me is is a weak point. Um, but yeah, and 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 the final piece, I, I think this side, um, you you would have you would have been well served with having just another three dimensional element, maybe even a little bit further ahead. Uh, than the the one on the right to just really again you know reinforce that that planes of of three dimensional stuff like a like a pole or a um, even one of those I beams that you've got down the bottom there you know just running across sort of into the background because it, it it looks good here uh, the 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 fact that it looks good here um, that things sort of standing there and creating the depth but then on this side it doesn't it doesn't look quite as good so just something but overall mate like this is this is something I'd be really proud of um, a, a really good take on this figure a unique take on this figure and um, yeah man have fun keep painting keep kicking some fucking goals Merry Christmas unexplained thank you Uh, I am I am still running with my one feedback per piece, but um, I don't really remember if I've given you feedback recently, have I? You're welcome, champion. Yeah, generally that's correct. I have I have a concrete reason for that, right? There needs to be a moment where you go, I'm gonna make a decision about this piece and I'm gonna do it. 
and usually that will result in a mistake, which is fine because mistakes are good because they teach us about what we did wrong and what we can do better for next time. So I am hesitant to give feedback twice on a piece because then you're like going, well, I'm just going to do what Deno says and you're not making any decisions and you're not making mistakes and learning for yourself. So too much feedback, not a good thing. Feedback important, too much feedback, bad. All right. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna, I'll just do some hair now because I talked about it before. All right, so let's let's see if we can zoom in. And th and this figure is fucking terrible for hair because it's so fucking small. All right, so I'm gonna focus our highlights along uh, the viewing angle. I normally get feedback just before um, just before you finish but close because I feel like you get uh, a sense of the whole piece you've still got time to make some changes. Let's go out. Let's get physical, physical. I want to get physical. Let's get into physical. Let me hear your body talk. Your body talk. So I'd like to see some, some different angles, um, but there's a lot of cool stuff here. Uh, the, the height between the two, I like that. Um, I feel like the, the rocks, the twigs, the stuff, it, it sort of reads quite natural. Is she, is she on a separate base or something? Is she coming out from the, from the base? Um, I'm not sure if you've got an airbrush or not, but I think the the rock face it's got dry brush syndrome, um, which is which is a common thing I see on rocks. It's very easy to just get in there and dry brush them, and it's usually fine. But it has a very specific look, which is that it looks like it's been dry brushed. Um, and I feel like all you need to do to just uh, make it look just a little more realistic, a little more natural, is to actually uh, add some brush, uh, I've got my rocks behind me, I'll show you in a second what I mean. Uh, the wolf's really good, wolf line thing, really good colours, good palette, looks like a timber wolf, which is cool. Um, her skin tone is uh, not contrasted enough for me, but well done, neatly done. Um, if I would take a stab, I'd say that's done by oils, but if it's acrylics, you've done well. Um, very smooth. But yeah, I like more contrast. 
Uh, the green is a nice striking contrast to the base. Uh, I, I would I would grab the airbrush and try and homogenize. Well done, good job. Try and homogenize that that uh, leaf fall, the orange stuff, just a little, um, a little bit, because it's it's very jarring how different it is to the rest of the piece in terms of color. Um, whether that's adding a little bit of orange and redness into the rocks with the airbrush, or, or um, you know, putting some some brownish tones into that, so it's not quite as overpowering. Um, and my only other piece of feedback is that tree at the back is straight shit house, just shit house. Very small, very twiggy. It doesn't look like it fits in with the scale and the rest of the stuff. G'day, MK Finder. But overall, I'm I'm excited to hear that I inspired you with my dioramas. How legendary I am! I'm a fucking legend. Uh, here, have a look at this. This is my uh, this is my rock base that I'm working on for this. Thanks, mate. I did have a I did have a Merry Christmas. Thank you, Captain Cup. Um, yeah, so obviously this is a much more fantasy colour palette than, than what you're working with, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, the, the rock the rocks were airbrushed. What do you that shit on there for? The rocks were airbrushed and then uh, and then brushed and then airbrushed again just to sort of soften them and make them feel a little bit more um, homogenous. We've got uh, the trees, the, the the stuff that I've airbrushed to keep it in in the same sort of palette. Thanks, White Wolf. Um, and and one thing I try to lean into with bases is to make sure that they are not taking away from the figure, right? So this figure that goes on here, he needs to be a clear focal point. So when we put him here, you can see how much more he stands out on this compared to the base. More contrast, more more value, everything about him is, is really pun punching you in the face. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, it's a it's a delicate balancing act because you want the base to to look you know interesting and uh, um, <clears throat> create you know the, the base should be something that adds to the to the piece, not detract from it. Um, and so yeah, but it needs to not take focus away from the figure. And the challenge with a, a piece that's as big as this is that yeah the figure is going to get lost in. Um, in the base, so that's what we're working on at the moment to try and make sure that there's a, a good measure of of value shift and stuff. So this, I'm going to do some more work on this, but you can see here the, the ripples that we've got. <coughs> we'll do some more on that later on. It's pretty easy to do that. It looks pretty cool. So. But yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think I made my point. Let's put this back here. coming along. Started like fucking four days ago. So it's going alright. Alright. So that's the first hit layer. <clears throat> so we'll do the next one now. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's the that's the key with particularly with dioramas, but even with figures, just little figures, you need to really get that balance right. Because the figures, what's supposed to be the exciting thing to look at, 
everyone's looking at your base and going, wow, your base is fucking awesome. You've probably done something wrong. And hey, like, that, that, that can be fine. Like, it just, it's a subjective hobby, right? Do whatever the fuck you want. If you like making bases and that's what you want to do, and you're just painting a figure to put on a fucking base, mate, kick some goals. The only thing that really matters is if you're having fun you're having fun doing your hobby, then you're fucking winning. That's awesome, mate. Get back into the painting. Why not? Uh, that's probably my paint job more than anything else. I have a number of criticisms of my own work, but, but one of them is that my female faces do go a little masculine. Hopefully we can correct that before the end. <coughs> Correct. Because I over contrast them. And yeah, that's that's probably the main uh, 
weakness in my work is I do tend to put more contrast than is required. Yeah, I enjoyed it, mate. How did you find it? It's actually probably fair to say that I didn't just enjoy it. I loved it. Um, <clears throat> a lot of moments in it that... Uh, How do I say this without spoiling anything? The, the series is all about <clears throat> uh, the cyclical nature of time. It's called the wheel of time. It's all about how time... Thanks, funny. Yeah, we're on, I'm on Boxing Day at the moment. And the main uh, thrust of the of the, the book series is about breaking that that cycle of time. Like breaking the breaking the wheel and changing what happened before, and so a lot of the a lot of the confrontations that happen propose alternate futures or propose different futures based on choices and decisions, and I think that uh, finale. Uh, that final battle was about uh, it's different to what happened in the books but it really uh, actually highlighted what what the premise of the books is
<laughs> the friendly neighborhood antagonist is uh, a very cool character. That that speech is direct from the books, word for word. And when they included that, ooh, ooh, rustled my jimmies, rustled my jimmies. Sure is. Sure is. Yep. It is indeed some good, good shit. He's my favorite character. He's, mate, he, his, his prose is probably um, up there as some of the best. He's just a magnificent writer. Fuck, these eyes are small. What are you doing down there? Fuck. I might need to go to an even smaller brush than this. Oh, that's disaster. That is an absolute disaster down there.
Oh. We've recovered a motor. I feel like I haven't painted a face this small in fucking forever. Anyway, that's fine. She's looking okay. Cool. I do want to do just a smidge of air brushing on this. Uh, this cloak, so I should probably do that before I do this. Haha, <laughs> cool, mate. How good. A little cheeky Christmas painting, eh? It's been all brushed today, hasn't it? What can I sing for you, my friend? Last Christmas, I gave you my heart But the very next day, you gave it away This year, to save you from tears I'll give it to someone special That is the extent of all I know of that song. <laughs> Mm. 
But the very next day you gave it away This year, seven fourteen. Ah, uh, she's looking awesome, Conrad. Awesome. All right, bit of airbrushing. Bit of airbrushing. Think about this demo. What do you want to achieve? So my next, my next TV show I'm watching, I'm finishing Titans at the moment, season three, which we only just got in Australia on Netflix. Um, but yeah, then I'm looking forward to uh, uh, Witcher 2 and uh, Hawkeye. I'm going to watch Hawkeye with my girlfriend. Should be fun. Let's grab out one of my favourite colours of all time, but it is a fucking full-on colour and you've got to be very careful with it. Where are you? You dirty, dirty rat. You killed my brother. You dirty rat. I was looking at him just before. Where the fuck is it? There you are, you little fuck. Uh, this colour's called Hexed Lichen game air colour. It's one of the most magnificent purples. Deep, intense, rich. Very rich. You need to be very sparing with it.
bit of our Yupus Pink, friends. Like a magenta y colour, which I like. Okay. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, drop some paintbrushes. Tiny couple of wee little highlights on this gear. A little bit of blue and that purple for a shadow.
are you doing, Jedi? Put yourself together, man! Uh, White Wolf, are you talking about in my airbrush, or are you talking about on my, on my palette? Yeah, it's called Joe Sonia Magic Mix. The glorious product. Highly, highly recommend. Yeah, it is. It is an awesome product. Um, just helps your your paint flow off your brush. Helps the way that it. Uh, Distributes the pigments. Okay, broadside. Yeah, yeah, can do that. It's just a very, uh, it's just a good all-round product. But what what you need to do is play with it, because if you just start using it and they're like, yeah, yeah, this is mad, but then you don't actually understand why you're using it. Like when you when you put it on your brush, you need to be like, I'm using this because I want to gain this benefit as opposed to I am using this because Deno told me it was awesome. Eight bucks. Merry Christmas yo. Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't replace normal thinning. But as I said, you just got to understand why. Why you're doing it, you know. If you've, if you've, if you're like, I just want my paint to flow in a specific way. I just want to use this to create a smoother blend. You know, understand why. That's all I'm saying. There's a reason why those products exist, right? There's nothing, nothing wrong with grabbing something that's going to help you be better at achieving the result you're trying to achieve. I think people have this perspective that oh, it's all about, it's all about, you got to be able to do it with water, and you know that's cheating using anything else. Bullshit! It's not cheating. There's no such thing as cheating in art because there's no rules. Do whatever the fuck you want. 
That's the rules. But it's important to understand why. Why you're doing something. If you can't answer, I am using this because I want to achieve this. Then you're a painter. Still haven't tried them, mate. Yeah, I wouldn't mind trying them, but haven't got around to it. I think I think Irresistible Force, my localish hobby shop, has some. So next time I'm down there, I might grab a couple just to try out. Hey, Lady B Miniatures, thank you. Hope you also had a glorious Christmas. understand why why humans are the way they are look why why do we why is our default to just hate something real time's a great example people are just so sad on it Dad retweeted something yesterday that just made me laugh so hard. And this will come off as mean potentially, but I'm going to say it anyway because it just is absolutely related to what we're talking about. This lady from the Sunshine Coast, I'm going to guess an elderly woman or somewhat elderly. Let's call her a middle aged Karen who has elected not to get her vaccinations, got refused service to get a coffee at a local coffee shop. And her tweet was, I've never felt so humiliated in my life. It's just like what the Jews faced in World War II. So my dad retweeted it. He's just like, he thought it was hysterical. And she got absolutely crucified in the comments. Absolutely crucified. It's like, yeah love, you not be able to get a morning coffee is like the Jews in World War II, in concentration camps, in segregation. You're spot on, absolutely correct. G'day Durst Roman. Yep, exactly the same, right? And I think the reason why I bring it up is our generation of people, I consider myself middle-aged, I'm 38 for what it's worth, We've never really gone through hardship, right? Not real genuine hardship. This COVID stuff is our, probably the hardest thing we'll have to face in our lifetimes. Well, we certainly hope it is. just yeah 
I just think our our opportunity as human beings right now is to just follow my golden rule. Don't be a fuckwit. <laughs> just don't be a fuckwit. Like seriously, take a step back from yourself. Give yourself an uppercut. Yeah. Give yourself a fucking uppercut, mate. Seriously, you can't get a coffee because you didn't fucking get something that has very minimal side effects, uh, if any, and helps protect everyone in your world. Fuck me. It's like, just pull your fucking head in. Anyway, let's not get too political, friends. It's Christmas or holidays for some people. It's just a, the golden rule, friends. Don't be a fuckwit. G'day Shari plays. Thank you. Yep, that's that's our <laughs> Yep. Yep. I don't know. I've I've said I've said this before. I think Facebook and social media is, is responsible for a a few things, but I think it's responsible for highlighting just how stupid people are in general. Uh, and how easily influenced people can be. Now, yeah. Oof. AK would be my preference there, mate. Um, the scale are really, really matte. And unless you are a much better painter than I am, I think you'll find that to be a downside as opposed to a, a pro. It's a positive thing. Ramaskera! Oh, I think I know what that is, mate. But I'm going to click it anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to watch that later on. Good one, Ramaskera. You're a champion. G'day, Jet. Oh, it's you. <laughs> you like pina coladas getting caught in the rain. I'm not into yoga. I am into champagne. <laughs> wow, that's a fascinating observation. I think my models look shit. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Now, there's a few people on here who've actually picked up my models in, in the hand and had a look at them in real life. And the general consensus is my painting is better in real life, but... Good to know my photos again, okay? Yeah, give, give yourself, um, how the fuck did I spill water all over the place? 
Give yourself a crack with a couple of the sets, the AK sets, they come in little little like eight packs. There's a couple of those you can buy that'll get you started on um, on the AK range and if you decide you don't like them, um, don't get scale because if you don't like them you will hate scale. I think I bought about I bought six sets or eight sets of the the AK. Why is there so much water over here, Dan? What have you done? Yeah, a lot of magnificent painters are using AKs these days. They certainly seem to be the paint range of choice for some of the kings. So yeah, you, you, you'll notice uh, that when you use a really matte paint, it also impacts um, like how vibrant your colours are. It impacts how smooth your blends look. And that's, that's my solution for that problem, is I use whatever paint range I feel like, and then I use the AK Ultramat varnish to just make sure all of the finishes feel the same. Has it been enough time? Are we allowed to talk about Spider-Man yet? Do we think? Been enough time to talk about Spider-Man? You're an embarrassment. Jet, you're wondrous. Thank you, mate. Oh, see you, Conrad. It's late for you, mate. Go to bed. Yeah, it looks awesome. That that goblin. I think you're gonna see some glorious versions of that that figure. I think it's one of Lucas's best. 
Uh, what have I painted for LOTR? I'm sure I have painted something. Let me think. I don't think I've painted anything recently. But I've definitely painted something from Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, practice, 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 mate. That's the key. you see is the holly that will be on your own front door. My girlfriend's on holidays, mate, so. Has he posted another one this morning or something, has he? Yeah. Yeah, he's been a busy dude. Out and about, having a great time. A small brush.
Hey, let's go. Okay, let's go. It's a classic good news, bad news situation, mate. Good news, no COVID, back to traveling. Bad news, no more free painting. I'm just hanging out at home having a paint. Okay, let's go. Aha, thanks, greyer skies. Welcome, yes. I was happy with that piece. Uh, why is there so much water in my white? I haven't put this beside my other guys, so I'm just not sure if this is actually looking any good for my diorama. But we'll find out soon. There is so much water under this, it's fucking pissing me off. You mean available to purchase, my friend, from Mindworks Games? I think it was a limited run. Fucking calm down. It's like we're fucking swimming over here. Whose fault is this? Someone's got to be accountable for this. It's got to be an investigation. Oh, no, no, I, uh, that one sold, my friend. I don't have a single piece left at the moment. Everything I've painted this year is gone. Technically, uh, the goblin is still available, but uh, a dude has expressed interest and is just determining finances. So, well, not not finances. We're just deciding if we want to do a trade or not. Yes, my advice, if you are looking to purchase one of my pieces, uh, make a decision quickly. And I don't say that to be a dickhead, but I just tend to, just tend to sell within the first day or two of me posting the finished picture. The advantages of having having nearly twenty five thousand Instagram followers. I'm a fucking celebrity. I'm a motherfucking star. Rapid Transit's been here for a long time, Minimancer. He's been around for probably longer than most people on my social medias. 
I remember rightly, he followed me back in my war machine days, so. Hey, Robbie's Hobbies. Thank you now, mate. This is from my impromptu diorama. It's, uh, it's literally come out of nowhere, and I mean that. I was simply living my best life, deciding what small figure, what small bust we'd paint next, and you know, ease into the Christmas period with. And now we're here. I'm probably one of the most, well, I was going to say one of the most elaborate dioramas and then I realised, well, it's probably not the case. Not really close at all, actually. This wouldn't be in my top five. <laughs> uh, feels like it is. Yep. <laughs> just happened, eh? I was just like, well, this this could be fun. Next minute, I'm fucking. There's models flying everywhere. There's a staircase. It's just all happening. All right, let's have it. Let's. I mean, she's she's looking okay now, all right? Like, I'm I'm pretty happy with uh, a lot of this stuff. So, what we might do is put her on this. Oh yeah, she looks okay actually. Feeling like oh no, I have to change that angle a bit. I'm 
going to glue her thing down. I wasn't planning on doing this, I was planning on painting this bit separately, but uh, I need to get that glued down, I think. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, sure did, mate. <clears throat> I live life on the edge. Yep. Just call me Steve Tyler, mate. I did my uh, I did my water effects as you can see and I made the same mistake as I made last time I probably just put a smidge too much coloring into it it's not quite as translucent as I'd like it to be I would have liked it to just be a smidge more translucent just like a tiny tiny fraction just a little Bobby Dazzler but we'll make do mixing my uh, need it I like putting a little bit of water on my on my fingers when I'm mixing it helps it go really 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 soft and buttery so you can just get the shit in there This is just all getting painted black, right? So I don't really care how this looks. It's just gonna get painted black and fucking forgotten about. This bit's gonna get some grass, so you can't really see that. Where's your little stick in there? Get your feet 
speed in there, son. Alright. Uh, cool, so I'll just show you, this is a fun technique. Um, which I learnt on a uh, YouTube channel called Luke Town. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Luke Town. He makes dioramas, pretty cool ones. Not my, uh, not my sort of dioramas, but real ones that look proper. Not imaginary made up ones like mine, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to get some Mod Podge and fucking blob it all over here. I've already done this once. Um, I just wanted to add some more texture. G'day Cooge. Merry Christmas, mate. Cooge posted a new video yesterday, friends. Not yesterday for me. Probably today for him. The Mod Podge is so glossy. I hope I got the gloss on actually. Yeah, good. <laughs> Uh, I think it was on uh, selling selling a model, or how much is this model worth, or something like that. I don't remember, I haven't watched it yet. Alright, there's me Mod Podge. Yep, that's it. Just going to let that settle for a bit. I'm sure there's a technique to like which way you're supposed to aim the ripples. And that'll dry with a ripply water looking effect, which is very cool. Uh, awesome, so that'll dry very soon. So we'll then have our diorama almost completed the base. I'm just going to paint the rest of that shit. Fucking hell, Dino, what are you doing? Blip, blip, blip. Yep. How good is the time? Oh. Going for two hours. How cool. Alright, so Modigano. Um, yeah, I mean I think this is this is coming out pretty nicely. Um, probably the the uh, The purple needs to be more highlighted, so let's do that now. No, I don't want 
don't want you. Piss off. And I feel like just what she needs is a little bit more blue. Because the rest of the piece is very, very blue. She's blue, da ba do da ba die, da ba dee da ba die. She was green, she would die. She's blue. She was green, she would die. If she was green, she would die. If she was green, she would die. How can we incorporate some blue? It's an interesting suggestion. I'm probably not going to go that way. But I appreciate you putting the suggestion out there. Well done, you. Even if that suggestion is literally the worst thing I've heard today. Teeth and tie. <laughs> uh, yeah, corpse paint. Of course, you're going to say corpse paint. It's Christmas. Wouldn't be Christmas without you saying corpse paint. What a shocking surprise. I think I've figured it out. I think I know what I'm going to do. Yep, I'm doing it. Let's fucking do this. Let's roll. Let's roll with the big dogs. Would you trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to tell the English that they may they take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom?
Indeed, mate. Yeah, we had we had a big spread of prawns yesterday. Swim in the pool, magnificent. Oh, magnificent. Yeah, love Morton Bay Bug. What a travesty that is, eh? Sleepy Sang, you've done the right thing. I feel better. Elora, Elora. mate
Yep. Good selections. <laughs> no, mate, I asked him to uh, make me look more like you. So, we're both fortunate this year, aren't we? Well, I'm working on the beard as best I can, mate, but you got a little something-something about you. Which fur texture are you talking about, mate? This stuff. I think that's actually supposed to be some sort of, uh, some sort of, like, something. Mate, that's just a couple of layers of the old contrast. Job done. Little Bobby Dazzler. Yeah, I like that. I think that helped. My feelings around the, the colours and the piece. Um, cool, alright. Well, what we might do is we might put her down for a bit. Uh, we've just got to do the crow. Uh, let's see if we can tweak a few little aspects of this chap. It's vastly different, like, style of figure. So... I'm finding that a little bit difficult to reconcile the two of them together at the moment. Yeah. Well, I wanted there to be a pretty uh, cold feeling to this piece, uh, but I wanted it to move into warmer colours up the top.
and I wasn't sure what colour I wanted to do this little um, cloth thing around here but I think we'll, we'll try and tie the two things together and do the same as her clothes will be the approach Um, yes, it is, because I've already painted, I've already filled the resin in, and for it to feel like that I would need to do warmer colours underneath the surface of the water, I mean I think I've never really fucking thought about how to do that before, so that was just my first instinct yeah, a bit of snow will look good I think on the base it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go Ah, oh, chase that feeling what a legend Mini Mancy gets one, Adakim gets one Joel Paul, the champion Mephistos and Chuhan you all owe great thanks to chase that feeling Merry Christmas mate, Merry Christmas to you, all happy holidays. Ha ha, what can I sing for you, sir? <laughs> We've already done that one today, but I'll do it again. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. But the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears. I'll give it to someone special.
<laughs> Your very drunk girlfriend is definitely very drunk, yes. Chinese airbrush so I can't compare but I do know that if I didn't have my airbrush I would feel like a very bad painter. Thank you Cy Girler for the follow. Oh shit friends we must be close to 2000 surely. Yeah, we'll be able to do a paint the Saba until I'm heading off for a walk with uh, Midlarochi. do notice a difference when you go from something that's not designed for said purpose to something that is designed like good paintbrushes good airbrushes alright let's just go a little bit of this Yeah, they're all right. Got a few of them. Have you used them? Got one sitting right there. Yeah, I would prefer Windsor and Newton Series Seven. I'm gonna get. I'm about ready to give them another crack now. Um, but yeah, these these ones I'm using at the moment are Raphael Kalinsky Eight Four O Four, and they're pretty good. If you're looking for a substitute. man can get
right. I feel reasonably good about our progress in the diorama today. I feel reasonably good about how it's all looking. I don't feel super enthusiastic about how well the two pieces combine, Morrigan and this guy. They're just completely different, like detailed models, vastly different. And I feel like you notice that a lot when they're side by side. Like this. That purple's helped though, bringing them a bit together. Hmm. Uh, all right. Let's let's put everyone together. Yeah, I reckon some snow will look pretty good on this. Just tint the snow with a bit of green. Could be super cool. bloke on there. This is what we'll be painting on, uh, well I was going to say Party Monday but I haven't decided if we're going to do another stream. Alright, the one thing that's jumping out to me dead this space is looking here. Like everywhere else sort of feels interesting. We need a cat or a or a or an animal or something just just meandering across the steps here. Wonder what I've got. Now that I've got anything ideal. Just need something. What do we think about this dog? I've got octopuses. Oh, 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 I've got an idea. Oh, oh. This is a great piece, by the way. I'm not using this, but I really like this. This is a phoenix from that Chimera Fire. It's 
cool. I don't think that's going to work, but... Maybe put some birds. No, no, I had an idea. Um, a little shrine. Like a little shrine type thing. Um, and I think I've got something that will be suitable. That's a big Jasha. Little tree. No, no, no. I thought she was in this one. No, she's in my other one. Uh, yeah, I, the pulp piece probably could do with some skulls, actually. I should 3D print some skulls, so I've got some skulls. What am I going to 3D print her, but... Um, no, I'm sure I've got a... Uh, uh -huh. out and tickles my fancy. Little fucking wood person, little fairy guy. Snake leg. Yeah, another another skull with a candle would, would be ideal in that space. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and do some 3D printing this afternoon. The goblin being swung by a cannonball? Yeah, I, I that was my first thought as well actually, Grumble Bumpkin, was a cat. Um, Yeah, I don't know if I've got any good cats. Oh, here's a skull. Oh, a skull. Oh, sword. I don't mind that. It's not going to be that or that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind that for some reason, like, let me look at it. Here. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's quite right, but maybe if we put it here. Something about that isn't, isn't sitting right with me. Um, I like the idea of this. Those are out of scale. Something like this. Doesn't feel right. Just go with a cheeky skull. I 
and I sort of, sort of like this this face concept. With the skull, nah, that's probably too much. Got some more little faces like this. Hello, little faces. Hello. It's called a lance, hello. Little dwarf. A zombie. Rising up out of the ground. <laughs> what about this alien? An egg? A mechanical egg? Carpet could work actually. The puppeteer. Ooh, what about a dinosaur skull? Actually, this could be this could be the go. A dinosaur skull and the other skull. Ooh. Oh, oh, I think we're cooking with gas. Dragon skull. It is the puppeteer, is a Lucas Penis. Oh, no, I don't think it's a Lucas Penis skull, it's actually off the top of my head. All right, we're just gonna get the balance right of this. Maybe this one like this. Maybe I should sculpt a little candle on top of this. The carpet is a good idea. I'm just leaning towards a bit of snow at the moment. So I don't know that a carpet would, would aesthetically fit in with the snow. I feel like that's enough. Maybe a candle on top of that. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the go. No candle, you reckon? 
Yeah, okay. Easier. Yep, locked in. We're doing that. We are doing that, friends. How yeah, good. Alright, starting to come together a bit now. I'm not I'm not convinced on the yellow gold on her head thing, but Yeah, everything else is looking alright. Yep, I'm I'm contemplating that. I don't want it to be overt though. I think it's a bit overdone sometimes. Especially by me. So bum bum -na -na, bum 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 Yep. Alright, cool. Well, thanks Dominican Dodo. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna call it a day there, friends, and go find some champion we can raid. Let's do it. Ooh, can we raid? Um, yes, so first of all, Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you for this year. It's been an outstandingly fun year of streaming and uh, yeah I've enjoyed it I've enjoyed spending time with all of you people uh, some of you I've gotten to know very well some of you I'd like to know better what's Jimmy the Brush doing who the fuck are these guys Oh, who are they raiding? Oh, fuck. We could have gone and jumped in on them. 264 people's not a bad raid, though, is it? Uh, Alright, well, we're not going Jimmy the Brush. Ghost Raven, that guy's been in my stream. Let's go. Let's go, Ghost Raven. <laughs> Friends, I'm back tomorrow for my last stream of the year. A party Monday to celebrate before I'm hanging up the streaming boots for a little while. Probably won't be back until mid to late January. So tomorrow is your last chance to hang out with Big Deno. Hopefully we'll get this very much finished tomorrow night. See you all. Thanks for the great time today. See you all soon. Raid! Raid!